Hello, studio artists. I'm your host, Mr. Granlund, here coming to you live from North St. Paul High School. And I'm here to bring you another tutorial. And this is our combination project due at the end of the trimester. So for this project, you're going to create a drawing that incorporates the skills learned over the entire trimester. So you have shading, one point perspective, grid drawing, and color theory. You're going to create a picture that has some one point perspective background and in the foreground taking up one third to two thirds of the space you're going to have a grid drawing as the main subject you're going to shade the total drawing accurately with one light source and choose a color screen a color scheme monochromatic complementary analogous um, to color the project with so let's break down all of those pieces and what it looks like. So I'm going to go over to my camera here. And here we have, first of all, my picture is going to be eight and a half by 11. Okay. And how am I going to divide that into a third of that? So I'm going to do some quick math here. So I go over to, you know, my calculator and I take eight and a half. So 8.5 times 11. Okay, and then I divide that by three. And I get this number here. That's pretty close to, um, so this is actually the multiplication of the height and width. So six inches by five inches is 30. And that's actually pretty good. So, because you get six times five is 30. So if I take a piece of paper and I divide it, you know, six inches here and five inches this way. And then I cut that paper out. This is my main subject size. So that's actually how I get this. And the reason I made this on a separate rectangle here is just so you can see it. You know, I can kind of think about like, where is my main subject going to go? And then behind that, I have my one point perspective. And so to set that up, I draw a vanishing point and I draw a line of horizon here. And this can be internal space, it could be external space, so it could be inside, outside, wherever. You just have to use one point perspective so that any shape you draw in here, for instance, if I draw a rectangle here, these lines, the corners go back in the orthogonal and then you draw kind of like a, a parallel line there and that gives you the look of three dimensions. So this kind of looks like a building on a street. Okay. You could even have, you know, train tracks going back into the distance like this. And then my main subject would be in front of all that. Okay. And so actually the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to work from back to front, but then I'm also going to create a rectangle where my main subject is going to sit. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to go over to the formative shaded grid drawing. Now in this presentation, which I'll have linked um, in the tutorial section um, on Schoology, we have the pictures that we used for the summative grid drawing. But then at the end, I have tutorials about how to do, like if you want to use a different image. And I'll have these um, videos linked so that you can do this yourself as well. So this is the picture that I'm going to use in my foreground. And there's actually a few parts here. So like there's a gray rectangle and then there's this grid that I made and then I took the picture and I'm just going to sit the picture in here. And 
then I know it fits in here. So this specific ratio of the rectangle here is a perfect ratio of six inches by five inches. So if I take my rectangle here and I fold it into fourths and then again into fourths, I'll have a perfect ratio uh, size for my project. Now actually I don't want to fold up a, <laughs> I don't want to make a separate picture and then like glue it down or something like that. I just want to have all of my drawing in one place. So actually what I'll do is, and you don't have to make this piece of paper, just I'm using this paper to demonstrate how to put your picture into here, so how you can think about having your picture in the right spot. So this is six inches by five inches. Okay, so this rectangle is where my, my cat picture is gonna go. And since I divided this into fourths, I can just use these markings here. Save myself a little bit of time. Actually, that's really handy. Okay, I recommend you do that. That is super helpful. So now I have my grid set up. Okay, so in this box right here with all the, the grid lines, that is where my picture of the cat is gonna go. Okay, so here's my picture of the cat and you'll see, I'm gonna, in the lower right hand corner, I'm gonna be drawing this cat. Okay, and for right now, so if I enlarge this picture, so this is just a rough outline, and I'm actually gonna leave this as it is, because this is this is eventually gonna become the cat. You can see it's not particularly drawn very well. It doesn't have any of the shading yet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw my background using one point perspective, and then wherever the cat's gonna like cover over, I'm not really concerned about like drawing all the pieces in there. And eventually I'm gonna take an eraser and erase out all of this and then draw the cat on top of it. Now there's still a couple more things we have to be concerned about. So shade the total drawing accurately with one light source, okay? So this is kind of tricky. The way we set this up as we think about the light coming from somewhere. And you don't always have to stick it in the right hand corner, but I'm gonna, and you don't have to draw this little sun in the corner. This is just a guide to help you think about where the light's coming from, okay? So the light's coming from this way. The cat is gonna be kind of lighter on this side and then darker on this side. Same thing in the background, the background it's going to be lighter on this side and then darker on the left side because it's further away from the light these buildings here okay the part that's closest to the light like the front here that's going to be lighter and then this side area which is further away that's going to be darker now 
Now let's go back and look at all of these things again. And the last bit is choose a color scheme, monochromatic, complementary, or analogous, to color the project. I should put in with which. Choose a color scheme to color the project. So you can do this as you're drawing it. Um, I like to sketch lightly in pencil and then I'll go back and color with crayons or pencils or markers or whatever I choose to do after I've drawn it with my pencil. Um, feel free to use pens or, or anything that you want to do with that. Um, but I pencil sketch first. That's a pretty common artistic practice. And then when it comes to the shading, when I get like everything kind of drawn in the right place, then I'll switch over to using my, my colors and I'll actually shade with the colors right on top of the pencil drawing. And I also want to make sure that like I erase as I'm going all the lines that I don't need. Okay. And so I'll make sure to kind of draw all the features of the cat in here um, before I get ready to draw. But once I got everything lightly drawn out everywhere, background, foreground, and right before I start to draw it with my colors and shade it, I'll actually get rid of like all of these grid lines, any sort of extra orthogonal lines or whatever that I might have from drawing my one point perspective. Because once you start getting into coloring, then you're kind of on the home stretch there. All right, so this is video number one. I'm also going to do another video that demonstrates me kind of doing the project, but it's going to be more of like a like a speed draw kind of thing. I hope this helps, and I can't wait to see your awesome pictures later.